and a ball to remove evil spirits from your house, and a ball to bind good luck to you, a ball to sharpen your mind, and a ball to bring ruin upon your enemy, and a ball to discover hidden money, and a ball to ward against the evil eye, and a ball to win a case in court, and a ball to make a man in Fertile, getting closer, and a bowl to destroy a marriage, and a bowl to stop a husband from cheating, and a bowl. There it was, and a bowl to attract a lover. Whoever Inez Guanagao was, she wrote one hell of a thesis on Santeria. She had collected loads of bowls for making people fall in love with you. Most of them were disgusting, even to a ten-year-old boy. Every single one in Guanagal's thesis required some mix of pubic hair or urine or poop or blood or head hair or nail clippings or some other body part from the person you wanted. On top of that, most of the abos required other weird stuff. Where was I supposed to get sea turtle eggs? Preferably powder or whale oil or smoked pudia or a guapo, whatever the heck that was. There wasn't a single Ebo in the thesis that I could or would follow through all the way. But there were ingredients from various love Ebo's that I didn't mind, like cinnamon sticks and wine and hard candies and incense and borax. So, why couldn't I combine those to make my own Ebo? Papi said that Santeria was born of adaptation. If the Orishas wanted to help me, they would. I just had to prove I was serious, willing to sacrifice for the sake of my desire. Sacrifice. According to Guanagao, the Orishas needed food, blood. The sacrifice of animals is vital to the rituals of Santeria. As life leaves the sacrifice animals, said Guanagao, it radiates out, bathing the participants in the mysteries of life, carrying them out of the bounds of normal reality and into the realm of the spirit. Minds grow sharper, senses keener. Souls awaken from their quotidian slumber and stand ready to receive the wisdom of the gods. Guanagal's rhetoric, fantastic and sincere, utterly convinced me. My soul definitely needed to awaken from its quotidian slumber and hear the wisdom of the gods. I needed a sacrifice. In a lot of the lovables, one consistent sacrifice was the heart of a paloma. Guanagao left the word paloma untranslated, so I looked it up in our Spanish-English dictionary. I found two definitions, one a dove, two a pigeon. At first, I thought the abos probably called for dove hearts. Doves are beautiful and beloved and are symbols of peace and hope. Game, set, and match, right? But then I read in the thesis that Olodumare, the father-slash-creator of all the orishas, didn't like animal sacrifices of any kind. He was symbolized by a dove. You can't possibly be allowed to symbolically sacrifice the creator of the universe, right? So, the Paloma hearts in the Ebo's must be referring to pigeons. That made me feel better. There were always a few doves in cages at the magic store I frequented, so I had formed a bit of an attachment to them. I didn't think I could kill one, even in the name of love. And nobody, and I mean nobody, likes pigeons.